Hi everybody, this is Dan. I wanted to run through a quick video. I've had several people ask about setting up their audio interface in Cakewalk. And so what I thought I'd do is I'll take my guitar and I'm going to show you the signal chain from the guitar into the audio interface, into the computer, and then finally into Cakewalk, ready to record. So join me. Let's go through this. Here we go. So, here's the uh, audio interface that I use. Most of them are pretty similar. Now, this is just a two input uh, audio interface, um, mic, a mic line and a, a quarter inch instrument input on the front panel. Okay, and it has a gain knob here. It's got a phantom power 48 and it's got a guitar button or what they would call a DI uh, for instrument plug-in so if you're using a microphone you would not use this but if you're going to use an instrument or plug in a synth that you want to just record the analog video uh, analog the audio from the keyboard into the uh, system you would do it from here but use the instrument uh, button here to do that this is your monitor mix. It balances between your input from whatever's coming in on these with the music that you would be playing in the background, like in Cakewalk if you have other tracks, a click track, that kind of thing. That's what you would use. This is our main volume control, and this is my headphone uh, control. So anyway, you want to plug in your, your USB here, go into the computer with the USB. Now if you have a USB a driver that needs to be installed. It either came with the audio interface or you'll need to go to their, the website from the company that you bought that uh, interface from and download the driver for that particular one. Uh, some of these already are plug and play. You don't need to do any of that. You just plug it in and it will recognize it. Uh, whatever you need to do, you'll have to get that set up before you can do anything else. So anyway, we're going to plug in in mic one here, uh, input one here with my guitar, and then I'm going to go into Cakewalk, and so let's go there and see what we need to do there. So I'm plugging in my guitar now. I'm going to do that first. It's already plugged in. So okay, so what you'll need to do is open up a uh, Cakewalk. Uh, I usually just right click in the panel here and click audio, insert audio track. Now here's, this is important here. Um, before we do this, you want to go into your preferences by going through edit. You can either go through edit or press P and find your preferences, but this is where it would be. You want to make sure that your audio device your in interface is showing. Here's the audio box that I'm using right here. Make sure that's checked in both places here. Okay. And we want to check the, the settings here. The timing master is going to be right off of that device. Timing master is usually going to be the input of that same device. Now here's the big thing right here. A lot of people get this mixed up. Most interfaces uses, use ASIO. Um, you can use MME or WAN uh, protocols too, but this is the most common one. Now if I press this, for some reason it doesn't work with mine, so um, I have to go into here and I have to make sure that my audio box utility, and most of you will have, well you all should have if you have an interface, you'll have an interface like this, or utility, I mean that uh, you can adjust the sample, the buffer size, the sample rate, and um, I'm using 44.1 right now. Uh, sometimes I use 48 depending on the uh, what I'm recording for. If it's like for a media project, usually I'll use it on 48 because that's usually the, the sample rate that's used for that. Now right here, this buffer size, if you find that your cakewalk is, keeps crashing and keeps giving you an audio engine failure, um, it's probably because you have this too, too uh, fast, like you've got it set on 256 or 128 or even lower. A lot of times, especially if you add effects to your, your 
recording project, it's going to start soaking up processing power. So you want to you want it to be able to have enough buffering so that it can handle taking all of that and still be able to handle good quality uh, audio signal from your device. In this case, it's going to be my guitar. So I usually keep it about 1024. Uh, that's usually a pretty good balance setting. The faster or the lower you go with the buffer size, the less latency you're going to have. The higher the buffer size, the more latency you're going to have. So I find this is a pretty good balance for this. So anyway, I'm going to turn that back off. Just wanted to show that to you. So you want to make sure that's set. Now, if you don't use ASIO, you can go to playback and recording here, and you can adjust which ones. This will show you what you have available for your particular device. MME is usually a good uh, source, um, and you can adjust once you adjust that. Well, it's going to test it out and show you what all is on the device. Okay, and if I do that, then it's going to be set up for that. But look down here, my uh, if I go back to driver settings, I can adjust that buffer size for that there instead of in the device's sample rate adjustment. Okay, you can adjust it here. And the same idea, the faster it is, the less latency, the, the slower it is, the more... Uh, less the more latency you'll have but you'll have a, a more stable connection and it won't crash on you as much so anyway I'm going to set this back to uh, MME I mean to uh, ASIO and those are the settings for that now <clears throat> I'm going to double check here and make sure that I'm set up for that yeah, okay, so we're good there. I'm just going to close that out. Okay, so got our audio channel set up here. Make sure that you go to input here where it says none, usually is the default, and look for your interface. You usually say the name of it here, and then you're going to have something like this. Now, if you had a bunch of inputs on there, it would list them all like this. You've got left and right, which are input one and two here that's what left and right are okay now if you were going to use both of these to get a stereo input then you would use the stereo right here I'm going to use the left input channel one for this recording now I'm plugged in got my guitar turned up and all I have to do to get signal to is make sure I'm armed here and then just play a little bit and you're going to pick it up there. Now, notice you can't hear the, the signal at all. And it's because I don't have the monitoring on. If I turn that on, it'll pick it up in your headset. Okay, and there's the signal. That's coming through my speaker right now. I'm not using my headsets. Normally you want to use your headsets because you'll get feedback, especially if you're using a mic in your speakers. It's not so much with guitar because it's just picking up the guitar on the pickups. But anyway, there's your signal. And then if you use effects, like say you want to use something like, uh, like I'll use my TH3 here. Um, you're going to have more latency because of that. Let's see how much there is actually. Let's say I just want to use a little bit of crunch on this. Okay. Not too bad. Okay. So sometimes. Not too bad. That's pretty good. pretty good there's not much latency I don't hardly even notice it so anyway that's how you set all this up um, if you're using a sound card to record you'll have more issues unless it's designed to have inputs on the sound card 
uh, interfaces are usually a lot more convenient and they're a lot more efficient with the use of the processing power of your computer. So, all right, so that's it. You're set up to go and use a guitar plug-in that way. If you need to use MIDI, it's very similar. You just use the, the MIDI channel instead of an audio channel to, to set that up. Um, I think you're good. If you have any questions or have any comments you want to make, leave them down below in the description. Hey, I just wanted to remind you, if you like this content, go ahead and subscribe uh, and like the video. Um, also, if you are having a lot of problems and you just can't figure out what's going on, if I can make time, contact me up here at uh, danielcarlmusic.com. Uh, just leave an email for me and I'll be glad to get get with you. Um, I do teach lessons in this kind of stuff. You want to learn how to learn cakewalk, learn how to use a DAW, how to record. Uh, I do teach one-on-one uh, -on -one sessions like that. So check out my website. Um, but anyway, I hope this video helps. We'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.